Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? Here on Behind the Star, we share stories about the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Central Florida's largest law enforcement agency. From forensics to dispatch to the deputies on patrol, we'll talk to the brave men and women who protect our community. This is Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. My name is John Bustaker, your host at Behind the Star, and uh, today we're kind of in a secret location. I'm not going to tell you where we are because of kind of the operations that go on in this building. Uh, The only hint is I'm not at Central Ops at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm somewhere else here in Central Florida. That's because I am here at the Central Florida Intelligence Exchange Uh, We're going to talk all about that. I'm here with Captain Matt Butler and Lieutenant John Cute. Captain Butler is the director. Lieutenant John Cute is the deputy director. Welcome to Behind the Star. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks for having us. Oh, no, no. I'm I'm excited to be here. I think this is going to be really fascinating because I think a lot of people probably have no idea what you guys do here, Uh, me included. I know a little bit because I've been here for about an hour shooting some video, which uh, hopefully will be on our website at some point. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited because I think you do a lot of really important work and I just don't think the, the public kind of knows what it is. So first, let's start with Captain Butler here because you're the director, you're the person in charge. Uh, what is the Central Florida Intelligence Exchange? Uh, the, good question, John. Mm-hmm. And it's a question that a lot of people in, even in the area ask, even in our agencies. And so we're trying to get the word out. So this is really good for us. It is a information sharing group. Um, consisting mostly of uh, non-sworn individuals who are analysts from different agencies, both local, state, and federal. Um, we do have some sworn components in here as well. But it's, it's, it's a, it, post 9-11, we had the 9-11 Commission that basically found a huge gap in information sharing between law enforcement agencies. Yeah. And so because of that, um, the, uh, the big recommendation that the Department of Homeland Security took up and spearheaded was to establish fusion centers, which is basically what we are, one of 80 fusion centers in the country. And the idea was that prior to 9-11, one of the big gaps they saw was that whether it was federal agencies, state agencies, or local agencies, they were siloing their information, not really talking to each other about what they knew. Yeah. And because of that, um, we the 9-11 commission basically uh, intimated that maybe if we'd been sharing information, we had mitigated the attacks on 9-11. So that's our goal. Our goal is mostly counterterrorism. We also deal in in crime trends and communicating across jurisdictional lines. And we're going to get into sort of all the things that you work on here. Uh, Lieutenant Q, you you work, I should say, Captain Butler, you're uh, at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. You work for OCSO. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, and Lieutenant Q, you work for the Orlando Police Department. That's correct also. So so besides those two agencies, what are some of the other ones that are sort of fall under the umbrella of CFEX? And I don't expect you to get all of them right here because I know there's a lot. I, I've done my homework. I, okay. I, could, I could probably nail them for you, John. However, <laughs> there, there are a couple partners here that uh, we won't disclose that's fine. Uh, publicly. But uh, to start, uh, the Florida Highway Patrol is represented here. Obviously, the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The Orlando Police Department, um, Department of Homeland Security, uh, Seminole County Sheriff's Office is a big partner. Uh, we also have FDLE here. They're another big partner. A um, couple f- uh, well, for federal partners, we have the uh, TSA. Uh, they're also a, a very good partner. I think I saw the school district, Orange County School District. Orange County Public Schools is here. Uh, there's also, I can let you know that um, we have our great friends from the Orange County Corrections Department. Uh, they uh, are a big contributor as well. And the point is there's all these different people are sort of under one roof, theoretically, uh, working together to help share information. That's correct. And so, and so, Captain Butler, I mean, what, what types of things are you looking for? I mean, I know in the last 20 years there's been a – A lot of changes in the world. I mean, you know, pre 9-11, post 9-11, and I'm sure the terrorism that happened around 9-11 has changed since now. And so, like, what what are the types of things you're looking for, looking out for? Yeah, so it's an interesting kind of a paradigm shift that's occurred over the last maybe 20 years is that it's now trickling up from the local agencies. So the See Something, Say Something campaign, we've all heard about that. Yeah. 
that is that's just typical law enforcement stuff. That's local law enforcement stuff. That's knowing the people in your beat. And that's knowing the you know the, the 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 bad suspects that do bad things in your area. You know, that's knowing who the good people are who will give you good information. And so that's kind of what we do here. We we do get um, suspicious activity reports that come in from both public and private sector uh, individuals. We uh, sometimes they're just casual sources. Sometimes there's people that we have that are uh, intelligence liaison officers, the ILOs, and we actually train them to, to see what's suspicious and, and how to report that. Um, so that's one of the main things we do from the from the counterterrorism and the counter crime aspect. Um, some other things that we do is we do threat assessments for major events. Um, we just worked with the uh, NASCAR folks over in Daytona for oh. their last big race. Um, we supported them with some an- analysts and also doing some threat assessments for them. Um, we support o- obviously our theme parks and other tourist attractions in the area um, with that sort of analytical support. And we we actually plug back into a lot of our investigative uh, divisions within the local agencies of Region Five, and we um, kind of support some of the things that they're maybe not able to do across jurisdictional lines. When you say Region Five, what do you mean by that? Um, nine counties, basically. Um, it's we have nine counties in the Central Florida area. You know, Lake Osceola. I, I may not be able to name all <laughs> all of them, but we we move over to the coast from Volusia, Brevard, and we move south all the way down to Martin County. Um, so there are nine, nine counties and all the cities there within. Um, that's our region. The state's broken up into regions for um, basically for reporting and for fusion center or node reporting as well. So, Lieutenant, how, how does information get here? I mean, let's say I see something in my neighborhood. I mean, do I call this building and say, hey, there's somebody in my neighborhood doing something that I think is, is kind of off? Or, or like, how do you even learn about things that are going on in this region? Great question. Uh, just similar to what the director had just spoke about um, with the see something, say something. We have also uh, cfix.net. So cfix at ocfl.net. Uh, that would be one of the ways that's probably one of the biggest uh, depositories for us where we receive information, whether again, it be anonymous or not. Um, when someone sees something that maybe just isn't quite alarmed enough where they're going to call the local police or sheriff's office, but something that maybe over a period of time or just that one instant brings a little more light to something that we're concerned and then they reach out through again through that or they can call even call directly into cfix and, and when you say that like something that seems kind of off or, or concerning like like what do you mean i mean if my neighbor is bringing in boxes and boxes every single day and and uh, is that sort of something or something kind of i say boxes and boxes but it's just something that doesn't sort of make sense in your neighborhood or like like what do you mean well, one of our, you know, God-given gifts, right, is uh, how out of the norm is something to somebody, one person. So what might be strange for you may not be strange for me, or even in the part of the community that you live in, some things may be a little stranger to others. Um, so I guess the short answer would be you kind of have to go with your gut, right? Okay. I mean, and, and don't ever be afraid to report something because you feel like it's too trivial or the police have something better to do as sometimes we hear. That is the purpose or one of the purposes of the Fusion Center is to be there, or be that um, continuity or conduit to from the public to the law enforcement uh, and get the proper information to the proper uh, investigating body. What are the types of things, and I don't need you to tell me cases that you've worked on, but what are the types of things that, that CFIX would go after? Yeah, so to put some meat on these bones um for instance uh critical infrastructure is is a big deal to us you know whether it's highways bridges airports um, waterways those sort of things let's say you've got a, a an individual who is parked in maybe an off-limits area behind a fence or you know violates some sort of fencing structure and is taking pictures let's say a, like a like a transfer station, you know, say a power plant transfer station. And there's really no reason to do that unless there's, you work for the power company. Right. This He isn't working on, you know, uh, some sort of National Geographic on, you know, uh, transfer station, you know, art, you know, or anything like that. It's not exactly picturesque. Uh, well, if um, he is, you'll, you'll find out. Right. <laughs> uh, that's an easy enough explanation. But chances are that's that's an individual that we would want to know about. And uh, most of the time they're contacted by local law enforcement or by security or whatever. Well, that's exactly what we would say would be suspicious activity. There, it's a person doing something that's in an area they probably shouldn't be in, even if it's not restricted. Um, same thing at the airport. If someone parks across the street on the B line here and is 
taking video of planes going back and forth, and they're taking pictures of, of points of entry and points of exit, and they linger and they come back, and, and those sort of things are concerning. We always say around here, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And so we want to know about the duck. So that's that's kind of information we would like to have. So, Captain, let's say I, I see something. It seems weird. I, I contact you guys and say, you know, this this thing's going on in my neighborhood. Like what next? I mean, do you just sort of reach out to the proper channel locally or or, or how does that work? Then? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll you know, we'll farm some stuff back to the local jurisdictions if it's if it's simply. Um, after our vetting process, we think maybe it's narcotics or a barking dog or something like that. And again, to what the deputy director said, nothing is too small for us. And so what we, want, what we really want people to really realize is that no fact is too small for us to send us whatever they have, um, because sometimes that, that may lead us down a, a, a larger path. So the, the, the things that we vetted that they're not necessarily – um, on the magnitude of things that we handle, we'll, we'll push back to the local jurisdictions. But the other stuff, we will, we will actually begin to work from here. Now, we don't do casework, but we, we're, we're sharing information, and so we're starting to vet the information. We start you know, connecting some dots, and, and once we come up with something that is workable, we get it to the, to the investigators that need to work it, whether it's on the state level, the local level, or the federal level. So, so then maybe talk about that a little bit. What is the benefit of having all these different bodies in the room? Because, as I said, I'm, I'm here now. I, I can kind of see you. You have name tags of somebody who works from Brevard, somebody who works from Seminole, somebody who works from Orange, and, and they're sort of all in the same room together. Yeah, so like we talked about, serving a whole region of the state – it's important to get as much buy-in from all corners of that region as possible. We know the same bad guys traffic in the city of Orlando that come out into the county. The same thing. These guys don't look at the map and think, well, I can't go beyond the, the county lines or I can't go beyond the city lines. If so only it sure. worked like that. If only. <laughs> and so for us as well, we, you know, when you go out on the floor and you look at these people, the, it's a sort of an old reference for everybody over 40, but the Rolodex that these people mm -hmm. have, right? So you'll have to explain that maybe yeah. as a footnote <laughs> in the podcast. Um, the Rolodex that these people have, just the numbers and the context these people have, is just amazing. It's all, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost thinking about challenging them to saying, hey, can I get the number for so-and-so and see how long it takes to happen? Because they, <laughs> they either know someone or they know the person that knows mm -hmm. someone. And so that's one of the things it's, and again, being co-located, being right next to each other, I can literally shout something out in the bay or John can shout something out in the bay and it gets it's like it gets worked. Yeah. And, and they can connect us with who we need to be connected with. And to kind of piggyback on uh, what the captain was just saying, uh, also one of the benefits of CFIX, you know, to the region and to the both to the community and the law enforcement is with having all these agencies under one roof, if you will, um, you know, deputies and police officers and federal agents, they work at times from about a 3000 foot view, right? It's, it's the caseload. It's the amount of cases that come in. It's, you know, the different tasks and details that they are, uh, responsible for every day. This will bring you up to about a 30,000 foot view. Right. And with that, that allows us to kind of see the field almost like the quarterback. Right. I mean, if we step back and take the whole field, then it's, it's probably gonna be a more successful play than if we just stay in the pocket and, and do what we do there. So this gets us up out of that pocket, if you will, and allows us to see speaking earlier about crime trends throughout this region, uh, it allows all the different analysts, because again, it's an open bay, as you saw, right, the, the setup that we have here. So everyone, and the purpose of that, right, is to communicate. So everyone hears what everybody else is talking about on the phone. And, you know, there may be some secrets in here, but inside of here, there are not, right, with each other. And that allows for that information to flow. So if someone from X law enforcement agency is dealing with an, an issue in their community, we may hear that all the way across the region or to the south of us or to the north and say, hey, I've had that same thing happening. And we will connect those dots and those trends will be put together and then uh, vetted and put together and put out in a product that we send out every month to law enforcement and allows those investigators and officers to move their cases ahead that much further. And and at, before we started this podcast, I, we had a little conversation about how I know there's probably certain things that we can and can't talk about because of just you know, the nature of the business here, but you had mentioned like threat assessments. And I think that's really fascinating because you think of somewhere like central Florida, you know, we have thousands, millions of tourists that come here every week, every day, whatever, every year. 
Um, and so that is a that's probably a really big concern here because you had mentioned Daytona, you had mentioned theme parks. I mean, there's just a lot of people that come through here, and you know our our economy is built on tourism, and I'm sure we want to keep everybody safe, whether you live here or not. Um, I mean, can you talk a little bit more just about the threat assessment? And and I mean, what do you do? I mean, do you go to the facility and say? You know, we need to have people here, 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 and here, or, or how does that work? Yeah, so there's there's a uh, there's some matrix matrices, I think mm. that we could say plural that we used uh, in order to uh, kind of engage in that threat assessment. Some of it's geographically centered, some of it's chronologically. Like we just had the 20th anniversary for 9/11, yes. so there were a lot of um, calendar issues that you had to look at. You had some high Jewish uh, holy days. You had some Muslim holy days. You had, you know, obviously some significant events that have occurred around that time, including 9-11. Um, when you have um, dignitaries moving through our area, when you have just mass events where you've got large collections of people, we were always concerned about those sort of things, making sure that we harden those places geographically. We make sure that the, the people that are putting them on, whether they're private sector, they're also obviously they're going to have law enforcement presence there for security um, we help them harden their facilities. We help them think through uh, strategically maybe what their threats would be. Um, we we do a lot of um, we do a lot of searching, a lot of open source looking, um, and because of that, um, stuff that's readily available just to anybody, we'll hear stuff chatter whether it's on like social on social media, social media okay. platforms. Um, you know, and stuff like that um, that's readily available to anybody that's looking. We just happen to have an eye for that. And so, you know, we'll report back if there were if there's someone making veiled threats or something to the NASCAR event. You know, we want to push that to the NASCAR security and to the Daytona folks. Um, and so that's that's mainly how we do it. There's some other proprietary things that we do, but. Um, but, but that's basically what we do. And, and once again, I know we can't get into everything, but I, I would assume, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, you know, back in 2001, I'm sure the main, main focus was on international terrorism, striking Central Florida and, and somewhere else here in the country. But I, I, I'm guessing over the last 20 years that maybe that's shifted a little bit. Not to say that we're not still concerned about international terrorism, but there may be still some, now there may be more domestic terrorism where there's people out there that want to do harm to our own citizens. Yeah, I, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I was thinking that a little earlier that, you know, it seems like nowadays, or at least in the last several months, uh, politics aside, that, you know, a lot of eyes, all eyes, if you will, are on Afghanistan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've just left that country uh, as a military force after 20 years, and here we are back in the homeland. Um, but with that, um, and, and right alongside that, for a period of time now, uh, you'd mentioned, you know, domestic terrorism, right? So homegrown violent extremists or HVEs, yes. I mean, unfortunately, that I would say right now is probably one of the uh, the most concerning things that we would deal with here as a nation. Um, there's a lot of people, again, politics aside, whether you fall on the left or the right, that have their opinions and views, and, and some go well beyond, again, their opinions and views, right? So mm -hmm. those are the things that uh, we definitely like to keep an eye on. Uh, that's where we benefit here at the Fusion Center and having such great federal partners and state and local. And again, that outreach to the community, you never know what you're looking at, right? So no matter how big or small, those are sometimes the keys, right? That you know, you think of the TSA worker that had stopped or turned away one of the terrorists, uh, you know, just prior to 9/11. Right here in Orlando. Uh, right here in Orlando, and and those are the things that we can't forget, or we should not forget, um, and we will not forget for the purposes of the safety of the community. And that's one of the biggest reasons that the uh, Fusion Center operates today. And, and Captain Butler, you touched on this as well just a second ago that, you know, a lot of people will call and, or, or send us tips and all that, but it sounds like there's also some work inside the building that, you know, we may be monitoring maybe some social media channels to just make sure people aren't, you know, uh, threatening us or threatening people here domestically, or is that somebody else's job? Uh, no, I mean, we do definitely um, keep our ears to the ground, okay. on, on, you know, with social media. Again, you know, it's open source. Totally. I mean, if it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's yeah. on Facebook. I mean, you're not really hiding. It, it's surprising. Things. It's surprising what people will post. Uh -huh. You'd think so. But yeah, you're um, right. No, you're right. <laughs> well, we've had, you know, we've had we've had threats to our governor that we've had to follow up on. Um, we've had threats to other public officials. And you have to take and, and I want to say you have to take those seriously because, I mean, I'm from Michigan 
and there was threats to the Michigan governor, and those turned out to be possibly real. And right. so, you know, sometimes you see things online and you say, oh, well, that person's just, you know, they're crazy or whatever. But those are the people that can sort of move on their own actions and, and go do those things in real life. That's right. And, and, and like we've said before, unfortunately, we can never be wrong. We have to follow every one of these down to, you know, to the, to the dead end. Most of the time, and I, don't, I can't give you a percentage, most of the time it's someone blowing off steam, being immature or silly, saying, you know, they're, they're, they're paper tigers on social media and they throw stuff out, digital tigers now, I guess. And, um, but we, we will knock their doors, you know, we'll knock on their door and say, hey, how you doing? We're so-and-so with the sheriff's office or the police department. Mm-hmm. You, you made these threats towards, you know, ex-official and we want to talk about that. And generally speaking, they their hats in their hand. They apologize, but we let them know. Listen, you you know that's this is borderline. This is criminal. Yeah. You know, you're making threats, and so we just we we have to run those down, uh, just like anybody else. And so we do get a lot of that kind of work around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had also mentioned some success stories recently with this this girl. I think was recovered. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So um, and I'll let uh, John chime in too if I miss some gaps here. The Claremont Police Department had a, a, a basically a cold case that was, I think it was about 15 or 16 years old, where a young girl was abducted by her dad um, and taken from Claremont back down to Mexico. I think she was six years old at the time. Well, she reached out a few months ago via social media to her mom. I guess she somehow found her mom on social media. Um, the, the mom and family contacted Claremont because that was their case. The sergeant at Claremont did some great work in the Claremont PD. They reached out um, a couple ways and were running into a couple of dead ends because they needed to make some, you know, be, was over international lines to make yeah. a reunification. Yeah, so, Claremont probably can't drive down there and go it, grab her. It's right. It's not something that we would typically do. So you do need some help from your federal partners. And so they reached out to one of our guys here in CFIX who works for one of the federal agencies and was able to make – um, counterpart contact out in Laredo, Texas, and then get the folks down on the border there, meet them. And funny about this thing is we can't just accept that this girl is who she says she is. We actually have to vet all that. So thankfully, they, we actually they still had some fingerprints from when she was in school here. Mm. So they were able to verify her identity, um, reunite with her mom. It's great. I mean, it's like I said, we John called me. I was actually out of town and he was getting choked up on the phone and I was getting choked up on the phone like a couple of the dads of daughters that, you know, here's this girl reunited. And it, it, it the floor is still buzzing about this. This was a great happy ending up here that we you don't often get a chance to participate in that. And it was great. Mm. What do you think about this, John? No, I, I think, you know, just what the captain has said, that that was amazing. Um, and again, talking and and. Thanks to our, our, our federal partners that was uh, that were able to make that possible. But I said this many times, and I'll say it many more. Hopefully, that you know the men and women that work here and sit out on that floor are honestly, and I say this with no reservation, the smartest group of people that I've ever worked with. Uh, so we're very fortunately. I think the community should find comfort in that, and uh, and as well as the local agencies that. The talent that sits in this building, uh, of course, the director, respectfully, and I aside, uh, <laughs> but the, the men and women, honestly, that sit on that floor, they really are uh, the smartest group of people I've worked with. And saying that, they are also probably the most passionate people I've ever met, uh, especially in the law enforcement community, to come in day in and day out, uh, kind of just keep their nose to the grindstone and do the things that they should be. And we would hopefully expect of someone in their respo- role and responsibility to do Um with little to no reward, right? I mean, it, it a thank you goes a long way, but unfortunately for these folks, they're not, they don't sit in a building where they're allowed to be the public to come and bring them a box of cookies or, you know, to drive by and beep the horn. And, and that's obviously by design uh, for, for everyone's protection. But at the same time, um, you know, what CFIX has going on here, like I said, the, the community, the region, and uh, the chiefs and sheriffs out there should be proud of these uh, men and women that sit here. And I mentioned at the beginning of this, Lieutenant, you work at OPD. Uh, I'm not going to hold that against you, but, you know, you work at OPD, the, the second best agency in Central Florida, as I like to tell people. How did you end up here at CFIX, though? Because you, you haven't worked here that long. I haven't. I've been here uh, since uh, April. All right. uh, so Less than a year. Yes, less than a year. Uh, so by uh, the grace of God and by uh, my chief, Chief Orlando Rallone, uh he had saw that we had a discrepancy uh, in our resources and Knew the value of CFIX. Uh, you know, again, CFIX has been around since 2006, and OPD's 
played a small role there in having someone um, with a very minimal role here, if you will, uh, but more of their responsibilities to focus back at, at, back, focus back at our home agency. And Chief Rallone had saw that uh, he knew that it would be a benefit both to CFIX and to our city and the citizens in our city to uh, come on board full time and dedicate um, resources here um, that would hopefully like I said, give a little more comfort to those folks that we are responsible and charged with uh, pr providing security and safety to in the community uh, to know that we have this. Um, this is a force multiplier, right? I mean, I think for the agencies in, in our region should also understand that, that this is a false mul oh, force multiplier. I apologize for big words, mm -hmm. um, but it really is. I mean, and, and again, going back to what we talked about earlier, having these resources and assets at your fingertips and be able to call another agency, and yes, we can all do that, uh, but most folks in law enforcement uh, don't have the liberty of being able to get out there and shake hands and meet people from other agencies. They've, they're tasked with being at work for 12 and 10 hours a day, right? And just mm -hmm. making sure that the, the area that they are charged with uh, providing security and patrolling is taken care of. So when they are stuck out on the road and they're trying to make something happen for another agency, again, someone from the next city or county over that they're just not sure who to call, how to get a hold of somebody, uh, that's that's another responsibility of CFIX is to make those connections and have the ability to reach out, whether it be within our region, the county, or even the nation, uh, to make those things happen. How about you, Captain Butler? How did you end up here? Because you've only been here like two months, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm the real rookie here. <laughs> um, yeah. So I it was uh, uh, my predecessor was promoted, and uh, I'd actually uh, put in for this once before and was told no, which is okay. <laughs> I, I've been told no a lot in my career, and it's okay. But um, so I had an opportunity and I was uh, the sheriff Mina uh, graciously said, yeah, I think it's your time. So he sent me over here. And what's great is that John and I have known each other for a long, long time. We, we were on our respective SWAT teams. And so we we would see each other a lot and we would talk a lot. And, you know, we, we were very similar minded coming from different perspectives. And and when I say it's a complete uh, joy to work with this guy and it's like he really belongs over here. And so he, you know, he, he rolled out the welcome mat when I got here and, and, uh, really kind of showed me the ropes and, um, it was very, uh, you know, it was very accommodating. And so I think, um, in a lot of ways, you know, we, we work really well together and it's, um, it's a testament, it's a testimony to Chief Rallone and Sheriff Mina. And it, it's, it's more than just symbolic to have the two of us sitting out here, you know, working together at the, at the top of this, uh, of, of CFIX here, um, it means something to have Orlando PD put someone like John here. Um, it means something to the people on the floor. It means something to the region. Mm -hmm. It was a real, it was a real boon for CFIX um, to have that happen. Is there anything that you're working on or, or you think about it in the future? Is there anything that really concerns you as, as being the director and deputy director of CFIX? Something that keeps you up at night here? Uh, a lot keeps me up at night. <laughs> um, kind of like I said before, you know, we, we say this all the time. Um, we, we can never be wrong. We have to be right every time. You know, we, we have 70 million people, at least pre COVID, we have 70 million people a year come through central Florida area, particularly orange County. Um, that's more than New York city gets in a year. Yeah. We are the number one tourist destination in the country, if not the world, I believe. Um, and so we get people from everywhere, from every walk of life. Um, we, you know, again, now that we're, we're, t we're talking about Afghanistan, even though that's over there, it has implications for us here just on the national and international scope. And we're having to readjust to that. Um, we, we have a whole new emerging set of what I would say threats and concerns. We, we drone technology has really increased. We're looking at that. Um, we're looking again at social media. We're looking at new groups forming along political lines. Um, we've got a lot of division in this country right now, and we're, we're hoping to kind of keep, you know, keep our eyes and ears to the ground essentially to see what's, what's coming our direction. But we, we've got a lot at stake here in the central Florida area. How about you, John? Things that keep you up at night? Cause I mean, I, I would think, you know, once again, going back 20 years, you needed you know, maybe you needed 100 people to be in a group or 50 people to be in a group to plan something. Whereas, you know, maybe now it, it could just be one person who wants to go do something and they can find how to make bombs on the Internet and, and just go do that. You can have and that's hard to probably track one guy or one woman trying to do something terrible. It is. It is not impossible, but, uh -huh. you know, but hard. So I guess there, there is a good a good to go with the bad. Uh, I think of something where, you know, you say if I knew now what I didn't know then. Right. Uh, and that's 
use your reference to your your younger years. Uh, unfortunately, that's my reference to you know back in April when I first showed up here. So, uh, but I say that kiddingly uh, and as serious as I take this position, and I know that the captain uh, agrees because he's that serious as well. We both have a passion for being here, mm-hmm. just like all the folks that we all get to work with every day here at C-Fix. Um, but I guess my answer to that is, I have to believe that if we continue to be that dedicated and that passionate, we, we will always prevail, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, anything can happen, but I've traveled the country. I've been fortunate enough through my agency to travel the country um, for work. Uh, and we here, and I can I can say this without reservation, this is not a sales pitch. Everyone you know, in the community that's listening to this, you've bought into it because you live here. Uh, the men and women, honestly, first line of defense uh, that serve these communities that we are charged with um, partnering with, they are the finest law enforcement in this country. And I can tell you that I've been to California. I've named the state I've been there and I've interacted with law enforcement there. And it's not a takeaway from anything they're doing, but I know for certain the training that is received here in Central Florida and right down to the hiring process, right? So not to get off the track, but to let the folks know that they should find comfort in the fact that the agencies that are policing their neighborhoods throughout Central Florida, I can attest, they are the finest men and women of law enforcement. And that's a good point. Like, how, how does somebody work here? I, I, figure, I know how you guys work here, but like, if, if how do these other folks end up here? Uh, well, it's uh, memorandums of understanding are, are authored with the agencies. And so the, the, the donating agencies see a benefit to the CFIX model. They see the benefit not only to us as, a, as the, the receiving you know, entity, but the benefit to them is the sending entity because the minute that, say, Brevard County Sheriff's Office and Sheriff Ivy plugged in one of his analysts to us, they received a full team of 12 people in here that can work on their issues. Mm. You know, anything that they may have that their own in-house analysts may not be able to, to accomplish, they can just make a phone call over here, which is everyone in the region is able to do that, whether you're a small agency or a large agency. And we and we don't we're not we don't silo just in our region. We we work with people over in Tampa and Jacksonville and Tallahassee. We're in regular uh, contact with people all over the state of Florida and all over the country. Um, but the the agencies that have have given um, us analysts have really benefited, I think, from that Orange County Public School System. They're they're getting a better analyst when that person cycles out and leaves here. They they've been able to experience globally what an analyst should be looking at rather than just, you know, a little more myopically in their own, you know, AOR. Mm. So uh, I know at the very beginning, I made sort of a joke about this being kind of a secretive place and all that, but, but there are real people that work here that live in this community. That's right. Uh, That is important to know. So when a lot of people think about say department of Homeland security or the TSA, it's sort of a faceless bureaucratic, you know, organization that, but these are real people that live here. Their kids go to school here. They're, they go to church here. They're invested in this community. They care. They really do. And the, the, the great thing is, so they're sitting next to someone who works for a different organization, has a different perspective and has a different upbringing. The, 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 the level of diversity that's in here is pretty amazing. And these people are, like John said earlier, very, very passionate about protecting not only the homeland, but protecting this particular area um, because they are deeply invested. They're deeply rooted in this area. And I think that's, that's something I would really want people to know. Yeah. And, and I think you touched on this a few times that, you know, you really can't make mistakes because mistakes mean something terrible happened here in central Florida. That's right. Yeah. And, and so we're all invested in that object. One more time. If somebody needed to get in touch with CFAX, how, how do they do that, John? Oh, probably the easiest way, you know, we spoke about it earlier that, if it's an emergency, obviously there's nothing faster or better than 911, right? So that that's we're going to recommend that right out of the gate. But if this is something that, again, you're walking from your car, whether you're going to work on the way at the end of the shift or you're, you're going in the house and just something, that's, again, that's that God-given sense that ah, something's not right. You're, you're not being a bother. You're not being a pain. That's why we are here. Uh, C-Fix, C-F-I-X at O-C-F-L dot net. So send us an email. Uh, the you know our email box is monitored by the folks that work here. Uh, you'll get a response that we actually received your email. So you're not just going to be cast in the you know 
the World Wide Web. And um, but we will we will get to that. And like I said, that having the ability to reach out to where your information needs to go, whether it's your local jurisdiction or you know at a federal, uh, state or national level, we have the ability to do that. And uh, and that's what we do every day. All right. Well, Captain Butler, Lieutenant Q, thanks for uh, being here on Behind the Star. Thank thanks, you, John. John. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Behind the Star. You can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, I'm John Bustecker, and this is Behind the Star. Behind the Star.